just because the 2020 CFL season has been cancelled doesn't mean that season 3 of my next episode is cancelled as well. Anyway, it's time for another special no season edition episode of... Hi there, it's Brad Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. and It's been a while since I've used that intro, but I still decide that it is still worth having Season 3 of my Calgary Stampeders this month. This will be, obviously, the first and only episode for Season 3. And may I add that this was going to be the 75th anniversary of my Calgary Stampeders. However, you know, given everything that's been going on with the global pandemic with COVID-19, everything has been cancelled, as the Tegan and Sarah parody song goes. However, COVID could not cancel Season 3 of my Calgary Stampeders this month. And with this being a special no-season edition, I have to deck out my Outlaw jersey. As you know, we always wear our Outlaw jerseys for special occasions. So what I decide to do for this being Season 3, the only episode for my Calgary Stampeders this month. Let's just take a look at the whole schedule and just reminisce on what if, what could have been with this being the 75th anniversary season. I guess we'll have to put off officially celebrating that next year in 2021, I hope, depending on, you know, if we are allowed to go to the game again, if games can happen again. As you, as you can see, my various, various CFL update videos, why we are not going to have a 2020 CFL season. And ultimately, it came down to the main revenue generator for the Canadian Football League is gate-driven, and this is definitely an opportunity for the league to find other ways to uh, make more revenue elsewhere. But when fans aren't allowed to game, it definitely wasn't practical, and there was possibly they could have salvaged uh, a shortened season where I could have still done season three with a few episodes playing in Winnipeg, the hub city, but when government funding was refused there, and that's definitely a different story on another front. But uh, ultimately, the 2020 season has been cancelled. And after I go over the schedule, we'll talk about uh, a couple Stampeder players that have been trying their luck in the NFL as now that the season has been cancelled, there's been a lot of players that have been opting out of their contract to seek employment elsewhere because you'd definitely be better off if you can catch on in the NFL. I know you give up the Exodus as silly as it sounds, given their athletes, that they are actually eligible for, you know, the wage subsidy with the COVID-19 that everyday folk makes. But uh, these are CFL players, and they definitely do not make uh, the big bucks like in the four major leagues in North America. So let's just go over what could have been. As back in December, usually just before Christmas, the schedule comes out after, you know, you've covered from the Grey Cup and either celebrate or go over your sorrows, depending on how your team did. The schedule comes out, and that's when I loosely start playing my weekends from June till the end of November. However, it was not meant to be with this global pandemic. So let's uh, look at the schedule and start with the preseason. That This first game for the 2020 75th anniversary season would have unofficially started on Saturday, May the 30th. This would have been week one of the preseason. And usually more often than not, it always seems like Calgary gets the first preseason game. And the only uh, disadvantage of that is you, you get to see less of your regulars and potentially maybe see more of the younger players or players that recently drafted. But uh, it would have been on Saturday, May the 30th, Calgary would have played Saskatchewan. And it would have been a very tame version. I mean, it's always interesting when Calgary and Saskatchewan are in town. we see what the many transplants from Saskatchewan that call Calgary home, but still can't rid their uh, green allegiance, so you definitely get lots of red and green in the stands. That would have been a 2, 3, 2 p.m. kickoff at McMahon Stadium, so that uh, would have been a team version of the Calgary-Saskatchewan rivalry. And then Friday, June the 5th, would have been week two for the second preseason game, as Calgary always seems to finish it off in B.C., as we would have taken on the B.C. Lions at B.C. Place, and that would have been an 
8 p.m. kickoff, so that would have been the preseason. And then, when the schedule came out, the home opener would have been on my 38th birthday. And I was like, how fitting would that have been then? For, would that have been for me to spend my birthday at the Calgary Stampeders home opener? However, that obviously did not happen. But on Friday, June the 12th, week one, the Calgary Stampeders would have hosted the Montreal Alouettes. That definitely would have been a very interesting game. That would have been an 8 p.m. kickoff at McMahon Stadium, which would have been my 38th birthday that night there. However, what would have made this game interesting if it happened was last year, Calgary and Montreal definitely had a couple interesting games, especially the last time when the Montreal Alouettes were here in Calgary. When it started off, I missed it. I got only the tail end of it as... Usually when I go to the game, I go right when the gates open, go in, watch the warm-up, and then after, you know, they've done the rally, and then I decide I'll go, you know, use the facilities, grab some of concession, and make my long trek all the way up to my seat at McMahon Stadium. There was that pre-game brawl that happened that definitely sparked some interest before the game. And then, on top of that, the Montreal Alouettes beat us in overtime as Calgary could not quite get the touchdown to tie the game to force a second minigame. And that was the first time that Montreal beat Calgary in a regular season game in 10 years. And then also the fact that Calgary also lost a close one in Montreal later in the season, where that was a big factor why the Calgary Stampeders had to play in the West semifinal and not host the Western final. To have a little easier road to potentially stay at home for the Grey Cup. So my 38th birthday, playing Montreal, fresh off of what happened last year. That definitely would have been a very interesting way to celebrate. It would have been an interesting way to celebrate my 30th birthday and kick off the 75th anniversary season of the Calgary Stampeders. And then the next game, week two, would have been on Thursday, June 18th. I don't like these Thursday night games because of uh, my work schedule. However, we would have hosted the BC Lions, and that would have been a 7 p.m. kickoff at McMahon Stadium. And the one thing that uh, I would say needs to continue on is the Thursday night concert series with the CFL on TSN. Uh, guess you, of course, we don't know until closer to the season who could have been the act at halftime. But I definitely need more concerts to get more value out of my money when it comes to catching games because, I mean, obviously, you know, as times get tougher and money gets tighter, I spend most of my entertainment dollars on sport events, obviously, as a sports fan. However, it definitely would have been nice to get some musical acts because a lot of my musical acts that I've watched in person, especially in the last 10 years, it's been mostly catching at a sporting event, let's say at a great cup or a halftime show. I mean, could you could maybe say the last concert that I went to, if you can call it a concert, was back 10 years ago. I went to go to the Africa Day Festival, which was very, very, very first videos I posted on here. Definitely wish I brought my tripod. When I captured k the artist, the small Canadian artist that uh, sang Waving Flag, and it was fresh off the 2010 World Cup. That was probably the last summer concert I went to. But in terms of going to a concert inside of a stadium, I got to see my celebrity crush, Christina Aguilera, and that was back in 2007. But uh, getting back to this game, I mean, also the first time we get to see the BC Lions and the fact that Rick Campbell is the head coach of the BC Lions or was going to be the head coach for this season. He spent some time in Calgary as the defensive coordinator, so that definitely been very interesting as well. And then the schedule gets really strange because Calgary had a couple of home games right away, but then they had a much longer road trip for their first road trip of the season. So Friday, June the 26th, week three, this definitely would have been very spicy as the Calgary Staff Peters' first game in a row would have been in Winnipeg as they would have played in IG Field. That would have been a 6 p.m. kickoff, and that would be the first time that the Calgary Stampeders faced the Winnipeg Blue Bombers since being knocked out in the West Semifinal, where the BC Lions, or the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I meant to say, literally ran over the Calgary Stampeders. However, Winnipeg is still without Chris Trevler, as he is trying his luck in the NFL as a no. I know he was trying with the Arizona Cardinals, but he still had Andrew Harris, and that's why the Calgary Stampeders definitely 
lost big time. And then Winnipeg still actually had Willie Jefferson on defense. And definitely, you know, the combination of their strong, stingy defense and their running game was a big reason why the Winnipeg Blue Bombers beat the Calgary Stampeders in the Western semifinal last year. And the fact that they we lost a couple games to them towards the end of the season that set the tone. And ultimately, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers celebrated the, winning the Grey Cup in our house last season. So that would have been that first game. And then on Saturday, July the 4th, the Calgary Stampeders continued to be on the road because usually during the Calgary Stampede, the greatest outdoor show on earth, the Calgary Stampeders, the football team, is on the road. So week four, the Calgary Stampeders would have been in Toronto to take on the Toronto Argonauts, and that would have been a 5 p.m. kickoff at BMO Field. And the one big interesting storyline with this game is that Ryan Dinwiddie, who used to be the quarterback's coach for the Calgary Stampeders, would have been the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts, and that would have been the first time that the Calgary Stampeders would have faced the Toronto Argonauts with Ryan Dinwiddie now being the coach of the Toronto Argus. Definitely would have been the storyline there, the coaches show, showdown. And then the fact that we got Connor McGoo, the offensive lineman who's from Calgary, signed him in Freeze and Frenzy. When the Toronto Argonauts definitely released a bunch of players ahead of Freeze and Frenzy, so I made my video talking about free agents that happened. So that would have been an interesting, more interesting game to look forward to against the Toronto Argonauts. And then Matt Nichols would have signed with the Toronto Argonauts to be their quarterback to lead them. So that's a couple storylines there. So then week five, the Calgary Stampeders would still be on the road. As you know, they were on the road for four straight games when we look at the schedule. This would have been on Friday, July the 10th, week five. The Calgary Stampeders probably would have decided to make a week trip, weekend, week-long trip to stay in Ontario as the Calgary Stampeders would have been taken on the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and that I bet Tim Hortons Field at 5.30 kickoff. And then uh, the Calgary Stampeders actually, for the most part, have played well against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They definitely have had their struggles here in Calgary, and I'll get to that when they come back here. But the Hamilton Tiger Cats would have been a team that definitely would have had a chip on their shoulder because they lost the big game in Calgary against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers after having a 15-3 season. A couple of storylines I could say in this game is that former running back Don Jackson signed with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Well, I'd say one of the biggest free agents was Richard Leonard, who we signed in free agent frenzy, was now with Calgary. And then the fact that uh, Courtney Steven, who came to Calgary last season, went back to Hamilton. So there's a couple players that uh, exchanged in free agent frenzy. That would have been that. And then Friday, July the 17th, week six, the Calgary Stampeders conclude their four-game road trip. It's definitely ridiculous to say that in football, as the Calgary Stampeders would have been still out in eastern Canada. I guess at least you get the long travel out of the way, but the Calgary Stampeders definitely had a rough schedule to start with a couple quick home games and then going out on the road. They would have been in Montreal at Percival Molson Stadium. And definitely... Calgary has struggled in Montreal over recent years. Even when Calgary was even much tougher as a Grey Cup contender and the Montreal Alouettes, I mean, they've definitely have had a resurgence, especially with Vaj, as Milt Stigler, like Saber, and Adams Jr., and Curry Jones, the head coach. I mean, Montreal definitely looks rejuvenated as of last season as they got back in the playoffs. But Calgary lost a couple of close games against the Montreal Alouettes, and I guess depending on what happened in the home opener, the Calgary Stampeders would have they, they say they have struggles in Montreal for some reason so that's one thing we could talk about would have been the case with that game and then finally Calgary gets to come back home on Saturday July the 25th for week seven the Calgary Stampeders would be hosting the Hamilton Tiger Cats that would have been the 5 p.m. kickoff in McMahon Stadium and the Hamilton Tiger Cats definitely suffer with the I'm going to call it the McMahon curse as the Hamilton Tiger Cats the last time that Hamilton won in Calgary was in 2004. Yes, fresh off the Calgary Flames Stanley Cup final run. That was the last time the Hamilton Tiger Cats won the in Calgary. And definitely I would say the biggest devastating loss isn't that botching the missed field goal on a couple occasions. Because I remember in 2012 in last season with the blocked field goal 
that Hamilton could have won a game late, close, but lost that. But then the biggest loss, I would have to say, for the Hamilton Tiger Cats was the 107th Grey Cup last year against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So the Hamilton Tiger Cats, I would still say, have a chip on their shoulder and would want to redeem and finally break that McMahon curse. It's kind of like the Honda Center curse for the Calgary Flames, where Calgary traditionally struggles to play and win in Anaheim. Well, Hamilton definitely struggles and has a hard time winning in Calgary. So that would have been that storyline. And then week eight would have been the first bye for of three weeks that the Calgary Stampede would have had. So I would have said the first third of the schedule would have been a lot rougher for the Calgary Stampeders with those two quick home games. And then be on the road for four games. When I looked at the schedule last year, I was like, four straight road games? I never seen that in football. I know that traditionally, Calgary always has a couple games on the road during the Calgary Stampede, and they would never have a home game. So they're on the road then, and usually it's always a couple games. And usually it's also nice to maybe get a couple of Eastern swings out of the way right away as you know, get down the stretch, you play all your Western opponents. And for the playoff race, but definitely that was a weird quirk in the schedule. So then the next game would have been on Saturday, August 8th, Week 9. The Calgary Stampeders are still at home, as they would have taken on the Toronto Argonauts at home. So this will be the first time that the Calgary Stampeders would get to see Ryan Dinwiddie as head coach with the Toronto Argonauts. Now been the 5 p.m. kickoff from McMahon Stadium. And then on Saturday, August the 15th, Calgary would have gone back on the road for Week 10. Calgary would be going into BC Place. Who knows, this might could have been a potential football trip I could have planned. As I've done that a few times in the past where I've gone to Vancouver to catch the Stampeders on the road when they were in Vancouver in the middle of August. This would have been on Saturday, August 15th, Week 10. The Calgary Stampeders would have played in BC Place at 8 p.m. Kickoff, I would say once again, the Rick Campbell storyline and the Natural rivalry that you can go back to uh, Calgary Edmonton with Bo and Mike Riley. That definitely would have been a lot of passing to be excited about in this game. And then on Thursday, August 20th, once again, will be another Thursday night game. We're not a big fan of it, but hopefully there will have been another concert series that uh, with an intriguing act that I would like to watch, which I captured a couple videos that you can see on my channel. I know I had the... Uh, you know, a couple, yeah, a couple acts on there, so you can go see that. Calgary would have been taking on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for the first time in Calgary since the uh, Western semifinal and the 107th Grey Cup, and that would have been a 7 p.m. kickoff in Midman Stadium. Definitely would have been another emotional game, depending on what happened with the game in Winnipeg. And I actually didn't quite look it up, but I'm not too sure. I think that was actually the home opener for the Winnipeg Blue Bars back at the late June. So definitely would have really slapped it in the face for the Calgary Stampeders if that was their home opener and raising their Grey Cup champions banner against the team that they beat along the way for their first championship in 29 years. But this will be the first time I'll get to see the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Calgary since the West semifinal and the Grey Cup. So that would have been week 11. Week 12 would have been the second of three bye weeks as the Calgary Stampeders definitely need that bye week. Because week 13 would have been on Monday, September 7th, is the Labor Day Classic. the One of my favorite games of the year. Where we definitely show our pride and show my Calgary spirit. As we would have taken on, I would still call them the Edmonton Eskos. I know now they're technically called the Edmonton Football Team as the name got dropped. But I would think if this pandemic didn't happen... The name of change wouldn't have happened because now there's more time to worry about other things. So the Battle of Alberta would still been it was a traditional 2:30 kickoff at McMahon Stadium. So I'm going to still call it the Edmonton Eskimos. Calgary usually wears their outlaw jerseys on Labor Day. That definitely signifies the second half of the season and the race to the playoffs begins. So depending on where they are in the standings, it's always an intense game, no matter because there's been years where Calgary is either way ahead and Edmonton's behind, and there was a few. Lean years, especially during the F Troop days, where Calgary was down here and Edmonton was up here, especially with the early days of Ricky Ray. But that all gets thrown out the window on Labor Day. And it's just a playoff atmosphere and, you know, something to at least celebrate, at least if we can beat Edmonton. That's always the matter. Beating Edmonton. And then the following week, Saturday, September 12th, 
week 14, they rematch up in Edmonton, which makes it easier for me to make that trip to wear my red and take it up the road to Edmonton to continue backing my Calgary Stampeders in any territory at the Brick Field at Commonwealth Stadium. That'll be a 5 p.m. kickoff, and that's where I either decide to either stay overnight or just drive late back and get back to Calgary early in the morning. There's always interesting games against Calgary and Edmonton. No matter where they are in the standings and depending on storylines or how the game is. And definitely, I would say, not more often than not, the last few years when I've made the trip up to Edmonton, definitely have had some very interesting games where we are the right end or the wrong end of it. So that was that. And then Friday, September 18th, week 15, the Calgary Stampeders will finally get to play the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in Saskatchewan at Mosaic Stadium. That would have been 8 p.m. kickoff. Of course, it's always interesting when we play the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Surprisingly, it wasn't until much later in the season that Calgary would get to play Saskatchewan as, you know, the natural rivalry. But it's definitely even more hostile when it's in Mosaic Stadium. And I definitely, in the old stadium, I haven't caught in the game. I did a sneak peek back in 2016 when it was about to be open when I made the trip to uh, Regina for the Labor Day Sunday game because I made sure I wanted to at least catch a few games in the old stadium, but I was at one game when it was Calgary and Saskatchewan and there was definitely some storylines going into that game and uh, definitely was hostile but it was satisfying to be in Saskatchewan in my red as celebratory, but it's always great to beat Saskatchewan in Saskatchewan, so that would in that game. And then on Friday, September the 25th, Week 16, the Calgary Stampeders would be taking on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So that was definitely one of the teams that uh, it always works out that you play each other, everyone at least twice, one at home, one on the road. But you play at least two opponents three times, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers is one of them. And the BC Lions would have been the other team that we would have drawn three times. But Calgary would get to play Winnipeg twice at home. So once again, another uh, chance to make a statement that the real Stampeders did not show up, and the real Bo didn't show up in the West semifinal. That would have been a 730 kickoff, which meant that uh, I need my pregame nap and hope it doesn't go into overtime because I need my pregame nap when I go to oh, on a Friday night. So that would have been week 16, week 17. It would have been the third bye week of the season. As we get into the stretch drive, as there's one team that Calgary has not faced yet, we would have to wait much later in the season to see this former Stampeder for the first time as an opponent, but before we get there, it would have been Saturday, October 10th for Week 18. Speaking of playing the team three times in a season, the Calgary Stampeders would have played their third time against the BC Lions, second trip in Vancouver. That would have been a 5 p.m. kickoff at BC Place. This would have been Thanksgiving weekend. So the Calgary Stampeders would have at least uh, wrap up their season series with the BC Lions, depending on how they're faring, and they definitely had a rough season last season as he did not beat anyone in the West. And the way how the competitive the West was, BC practically was done like the end of July last year. And definitely we're looking to make amends under Rick Campbell this year. And then another Bo and Mike Riley battle, passing yards. So that's uh would have been that. And then Friday, October sixteenth, week nineteen, the Calgary Stampeders will finally get to play the Ottawa Red Blacks. First time that we'll get to see Nick Arbuckle. So, actually, Calgary has a back-to-back -back against the Ottawa Red Blacks, but the first matchup would have been in Calgary. That would have been another late Friday night game, Saturday 7 p.m. at McMahon Stadium, so another pregame nap that I need after my work week. And get to see Nick Arbuckle for the first time, and then the fact that Ottawa, with this resurgence of this team, we definitely have had already some breakup history with them as we were on the wrong end of it in a tough game back in 2016 for the 100 and fourth Grey Cup, but we got the revenge two years later in Edmonton for the 106th Grey Cup. So they got that, but the Nick Arbuckle definitely would have been dominant storyline. And then on Friday, October 23rd, Week 20, Calgary, Ottawa will do it again, but this time in Ottawa at TD Place Stadium, 5 p.m. So Calgary would have to wait till towards the end of the season to see Nick Arbuckle for the first time as a quarterback starter, as Nick Arbuckle definitely played a big role in salvaging the season for the Calgary Stampeders last season when Bo had his shoulder injury and big part reason why Calgary was able to stay competitive and at least host a playoff game. So definitely would have been interesting. And then the last game would have been on Friday, October 30th, Week 21. 
the Calgary Stampeders finished the regular season against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So we have to wait till the last game of the regular season, not counting the preseason. That we would have the Battle of Saskatchewan. Definitely always up for it. I make sure my red is a little brighter and prouder when Saskatchewan is in town. As that's where my allegiance always is. I believe the red literally and figuratively. And that would have been 7.30 kickoff in McMahon Stadium. Usually this is when they have that light up the night. When you have the fireworks at the end of the game. So I also made a few videos on that. So that would have been the schedule. For it would have been the... 75th anniversary season. So that was the whole schedule. And then of course the playoffs on the November 8th would have been the semifinals where the Eastern semifinal was always at 11 a.m. and the Eastern and the Western semifinal at 2.30 p.m. These are all mountain time by the way. And then the finals, the Eastern final would have been and the Western final 11 a.m. kickoff and 2.30 p.m. kickoff for East and West respectively would have been on Sunday November the 15th and then the 108th Great Cup would have been on Sunday, November 22nd at Mosaic Stadium in Regina. That would have been a 4 p.m. kickoff that starts at the same time every year. Might be even before all this has happened. My odds of going to the Great Cup this year was definitely a lot thinner because of being able to find a room. And uh, I do have some family that live in Regina, but uh, I haven't seen them years in. Plus, they have pets and my pet allergies and that. Would have been a problem for me to bum at their place for the Grey Cup to save money, but uh, so I would have probably not gone unless that won. But uh, there is going to be no Grey Cup this year. And speaking of Grey Cup, in a separate video, I'll talk about fan base that there's a fan base that the CFL has come up with. So that would have been the schedule for the Calgary Stampeders in 2020 for their 75th anniversary season. Definitely would have been some trading storylines that I hypothetically come up with just with player movement, coach movement, and who knows what could have happened before. This is all just being hypothetical. But that was the schedule. So the last part of this video, before I give my final thoughts, there's a couple Stampeders that are trying their luck in the NFL. Well, Reggie Bagleton, we knew coming in after the season, was already going to the NFL. And as I'm hearing that, he's actually slowly impressing with the Green Bay Packers. So our top receiver last year could be in Green Bay, and then Trey Roberson, their cornerback, who was one of the best uh, cornerbacks in the league there with, you know, G Ganey, Chad Ganey, I think his name, yeah, G Ch Ganey for Saskatchewan at getting receptions. Well, he did try his luck with the Chicago Bears, but he got released on an injury. And then a couple players that recently opted out of their contracts to try luck in the NFL, well, last year's rookie of the year winner, Nate Holy, actually got on with the Miami Dolphins, and then Winton McManus also caught on with the New Orleans Saints. So there's a couple former Stampeders that are trying their luck in the NFL that you keep an eye on, depending on how things go in the NFL this year. And there's definitely many players that have been opting out with their contracts now that there is no 2020 season that they have the right. And definitely you could be better off, even if you're just a, a third-string practice player, then you would be a starter in the CFL. But that's how the economics work, unfortunately. So yeah, just my final thoughts is that, uh, I mean, this is definitely a video where I figured on what could have been. It's just something fun to look at the schedule and say what could have been. However, it is what it is. Hopefully we'll be back in 2021 and celebrate the 75th anniversary season a year later than originally planned. You know, maybe had some tributes to uh, past players. I know one player I definitely would have loved to see him back in Calgary as a celebratory was Doug Flutie and... Uh, Definitely got that in 2008 when his name got inducted onto the Wall of Fame. But a couple of years ago, back in 2017, when we celebrated the 25th anniversary of the 1992 Grey Cup champion team, Doug Flutie could not make it for that weekend for the ceremony. So unfortunately, uh, he was in town and spent time with the team. But he definitely wasn't around for the celebratory when the former team there. But definitely shows the son of the times that those were like the first Calgary Stampeders that... I cheer for and grew up and realizing that they're much older just like I am and uh, you know that definitely would have been interesting to look back at that also recently actually August 15th the exact date back in 1960 McMahon Stadium actually opened and definitely I'll share a picture of McMahon Stadium in the early days that it's not the same stadium in that same area because the University of Calgary campus was not built yet 
when McMahon Stadium was built. So that definitely, I mean, definitely it's a dated stadium and it would have had their 60th anniversary of McMahon Stadium where the Calgary Stampeders call home after playing their first 15 seasons at Milwada, where the Milwada Armory is on the west end of downtown. However, that would have been also another celebratory that uh, we get to miss out on, but I'm definitely ready to for a new McMahon Stadium down the road, hopefully sooner rather than later. But, uh, you know, it's just all the economics. So uh, that's everything I got for season three of my Calgary Stampeders this month. Uh, special, no season, everything is canceled edition, but, uh, you know, didn't want to cancel season three. At least wanted to sell something. I guess there won't be any on the road to the Grey Cup videos. I can't simulate that or not too sure what I'll do. Maybe uh, I'll decide to maybe hypothetically think what would it be like if every team won the Grey Cup this year. I don't know. That's something I might be thinking about just to sell some for the on the road to the Grey Cup playlist this year. But at least I'll get something in for season three of my Calgary Stampeders this month. So hopefully... Uh, We'll have a season four if I continue on being more active on YouTube. And uh, I actually talk about games and recapping games that actually happened and Salvatore happened, all the drama that comes to sue, any injuries or any trades or whatever. But I uh, don't think there'll be too much more CFL content now that the season is canceled. Hopefully uh, there won't be making a video saying that the CFL is canceled permanently because we don't know. It's definitely the league has gone through some dark times and has overcome, but uh, who knows what this is going to bring right now. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, home the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe. I mostly talk Calgary sports on my YouTube channel. I also do have some personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and I did touch upon in this video. I do share my experience with them on the road at a sporting event. So I have all plenty of content on my channel, so if that all sounds like you be interested to watch, do follow along. With this Calgary sports fan's journey, you know what you need to do. Just make sure you like, subscribe. According to my demographics, 85% of people watch my stuff aren't subscribed. So uh, hopefully you can hit the like, subscribe and support the channel and keep me growing on this platform as I do what I do. As I want to continue growing and see what this takes me. And I also have my other social media links down in the description below for other ways you can follow me. And as I say, to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey. So as I say here, go Stamps Go, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video, whichever video you happen to watch and come upon on my channel. So thank you.